Hey guys, welcome to the Will Be Experts episode 45. I'm Jeff. I'm Ron. We've done this 45 times, Ron, and we still suck at our job. <laughs> you think by episode 50 we might? Nah. 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 Why well, start with quality now? <laughs> Am I right? So this this is the podcast that almost didn't happen because, good lord, there is not shit to talk about. So this is going to be either painful rants about shit we didn't plan to rant about or like a 15 minute podcast well don't oversell it jeff hey i'm trying <laughs> I'm trying yeah let's just like let's just get this shit started let's get over with <laughs> now we can go back and play some more dark souls dark, dark souls oh, dark souls <laughs> all right first up in the movie news ron i don't know if you saw the actual image behind this but i think vin diesel on instagram put up a picture where it was uh, talking about the Fast and the Furious, uh, what they, they've started calling it the Fast and Furious Saga. Because I didn't realize this, but by the time this movie slate that they have planned is over, it will have been on for 20 years. Holy shit. Because the, the last one on his Instagram picture was slated fi- Fast and the Furious 10 for 2021. The first Fast and the Furious movie was 2001. Isn't that ridiculous? That is absolutely ridiculous. Absolutely ridiculous. ridiculous. And... Uh, he announced it basically saying this is the end of their current uh, version of Fast and the Furious, but they make so much money, it has to go on in some way. Now, I'm assuming, since he's such a big part of the movies and stuff, that his production studio is involved in the movies, right? At least in some way, I'm so sure. So he's probably still going to be raking it in, even if he's not in them. Oh, yeah, yeah. I, I'm not as plugged into Fast and the Furious as a lot of people. I still like them, but I'm not one of those people who has to go see it opening weekend like a lot of people are. I usually, like, I still haven't seen Seven. I like um, I like their kind of Mission Impossible y route they eventually went with it. Like, they're fun movies, but I usually catch them on, like, DVD. I don't go yeah. out to watch them. I think you're a little bit more into them than I am, which is funny because I have actually seen six and you haven't seen even six yet. I haven't yet. seen it yet. Uh, so yeah, it was um, eight, nine, and ten in their release dates. It was like 2018, uh, 20, and 21 or something like that. It had the three final release dates. Yeah. And it, he had a tagline with it that was like one saga, two decades, stuff like that, like a tagline with it. Jesus, it's just ridiculous that they've been able to far and they, and they like they make more money every time. Like it's just batshit. Yeah. Like I, I I am not the world's biggest Fast and the Furious fan, but I respect their ability to make money off of that property for sure. <laughs> so, uh, what would you like to see if they, uh, which I'm sure they will, do spinoffs and stuff? Like, what would you like to see? Han. That was the one I like. They they're I obviously Han. They're obviously talking the Rock because you could put Rock in anything and he would yeah. make it would make money. Well, for a while he was in everything. Uh, I would be okay with some spinoffs with him. I actually do like his character in those movies, especially in Fast Five. I thought he was a cool yeah. addition to it. But Han is the the coolest character, which they really need to do more with. As much as as much as I like other characters in that uh, in that entire franchise, Han was the one that I just loved. He seems to have he's he has a lot more depth to him than most of them do. Yeah, and that actor is amazing. Yeah, he was role. very good. He needs to be more stuff for sure. Yeah, that's that's what I'm hoping for too. All right, we have another thing in uh, some of our other favorite sequels coming out and you can't even really call it a sequel anymore ron and that is prometheus 2 like yeah i don't know what's happening they're making they're making damn sure that <laughs> everything that was prometheus about this film got scrubbed and way early in pre-production like yeah. star of the movie now gone and i actually googled how to fucking pronounce her name because i've never known how to correctly <laughs> pronounce her name it is nomi rapace that is how you pronounce her name I was way off. What were you going to say? Um, I was basically just going to say Numi Rapace. This is Prometheus. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, so she's a lead character. She was a really cool female lead. Yeah. Which is, which is what lead. everyone wants right now. And yeah. they scrubbed her character, which is another odd um, yeah. part of the story. Yes, yeah, so Prometheus 2 has become now... It's changed its name like seven times. I've lost track almost. But it's Alien Covenant for the moment until Ridley Scott <laughs> like it's bored and changes uh, the name. According to him, this is the last name change. According to him. According to him. He is probably full of shit. But, yeah, probably. Uh, Michael Fassbender is slated to return. So, they leave together and then it's only him and the next one. So, did he like... Did they, like Something really, really bad happened to her character, obviously. I, I'm guessing so. So you think? You think they'll address it? So I'm thinking. So he, I think he's still going to be the head, 
Yeah. I get spoilers for fucking Prometheus from like eight years ago. <laughs> I think he's still no gonna one be. Will see. I think he's still gonna be the head, and their storyline is gonna be she died, and he's been like out in the middle of nowhere as a head. Yeah. And then the new cast stumbles upon him, and he's like just crazy because he's been a disembodied head for you know years and years. Yeah. Because I think this is. Uh, Ten years after Prometheus, I think that's what Ridley Scott. He's says. gonna be like Matt Smith's Cyberman head. Yeah, yeah. So, dude, it's Alien. We're gonna be there opening weekend. Yeah. But this movie has had nothing but weird things go on in pre-production. Yeah, and then when they said they made it a trilogy too, didn't they mean like that? Like this is the start of a trilogy, isn't that what they said? So it's like they're pretending the first one never happened, but they have to use it because it's the source. I, I, I mean. I, I don't it's it's so weird. It's it's very weird and the way Prometheus worked is that it was like it was technically a prequel but not. Yeah. Like you could remove Prometheus Most people did. You could remove your Prometheus from your brain men in black style and like it doesn't really affect alien. So I mean I guess if they really really want it just gone that you they can because it's not as damning as a lot of other prequels have been like yeah like it, it it's it's very easy to skip it from its own continuity so I mean who I mean I'm at least happy it sucks she's not coming back but at least Michael Fassbender is coming back because he was such an awesome part yeah. of that like he was to me the coolest part of that movie was he was so fucking good at in that in that role yeah, as the android was. so good yeah. Yeah, uh, did we have a did he have a release date for Alien Covenant yet? I don't think so. When they can't even decide on the fucking title, <laughs> Ridley Scott changes it by the day. Yeah, so I'm just gonna call it Alien Horseshit. I'm gonna call it that. <laughs> let's let's tweet that out. Yeah. All right, we got one more bit of movie news to get to. <laughs> Alien the comedy. <laughs> <laughs> Alien the search for more money. <laughs> yes. So we've got one more. It's nothing but fucking like w- more weird news. Like I, I, I'm still scratching my head over this one. Elizabeth Banks, most recently well known for uh, Hunger Games. You said it was Effie, Effie. that her, her character name. She is like the flamboyant makeup. Yes. Right. Uh, as you can clearly tell, I'm not the biggest Hunger Games. Fan. Apparently, someone saw her in all the different like uh, wigs and all the different dresses and all the makeup and said, you know what? We could totally use her as Rita Repulsa in Power Rangers. And she was apparently like super stoned. She was like, yeah, bro, I'll do it. Because like, the, the, the thing that makes me scratch my head isn't that she's a bad choice. She's a very good choice for oh, that. Yeah. But the thing that's just like, really? Elizabeth Banks come out of you go Hunger Games and you go Power Rangers. That's my next career move. Yeah. So Especially the rest of the cast... Is all unknown, which all isn't unknown. which isn't bad, but you wouldn't think they'd be able to reel her in. So far, I've been right because when they first started casting, we said they're going to go all unknown, and then I added, except for I'm going to guess Rita and Zordon because they'll have the least amount of screen time. So, and we said before, um, D'Onofrio as Zordon would be really yeah. fucking cool. So yeah, so I, I I guess all the money they saved. On those unknowns, they were able to use to bring her in because they had yeah. to sign her just the biggest fucking check. Because I think it's going to be Zordon and Rita, and hopefully the graphics is where all of the budget goes. And I'm, I'm also I'm going to be I'm going to be negative neg- uh, what's, what's your, negative. What's uh, your negative Nancy? What's your negativitron? Negativitron. I'm going to be Mister Negativitron for a second. I give this movie like a ten percent chance of being made. I until I see <laughs> footage of them filming it. Or a poster at Cinemark. I don't believe this movie's happening. I just have a... It's like... It's weird. Like, I can't tell you why. Uh-huh. I just have a feeling this movie is... This is going to be in development hell. And then, like, every six months, they'll add on a casting choice. And then make you think it's going to happen. But then you just never... It never sees the light of day. And we, we haven't heard about any script rewrites, right? That's usually your first sign of trouble. But... I don't know, dude. I don't completely agree. Like, I part of me wants to agree, but that franchise is still going strong. Yeah, they're what like fifteen shows in now, and and you know. like the number of characters they're introducing in the new one coming out is just insane. Like they doubled the team members or something like that. Um, it's just absolutely ludicrous. Yeah. Uh, m- by the way, my opinion. I am totally pulling out of my ass yeah. i have i have no like 
reasoning behind it. It is just a gut feeling. This is one of those that I just yeah I just have a, a bad feeling about. I'm not, not saying it would be bad if it happened. It's just like something just seems off about the whole project to me. Well, it's because you know it's kind of odd timing, I guess, and what the direction they're wanting to go with it. No, no, are, are they are is are they are they trying to make it like? Dark? Are they trying to make it family friendly? Like, do you even know what the tone is going to be? I think they've said that they want to make it darker. That doesn't mean dark. I think it's going to go from children only to family fun, maybe a little bit past Somewhat that. Somewhat accessible for adults. Yeah. Um, because here's the thing. They're rebooting it. This is going to be the Mighty Morphin Power Rangers from the original show, the original characters, uh, just different actors. So complete with racial coloring, though. Yeah. <laughs> so because we have to keep an Asian girl as the Yellow Ranger <laughs> and a black guy as the Black Ranger. Uh, um, but the adults that are probably going to be taking their children to see this are the my, my generation that grew up watching it. Mm-hmm. So it's, it can it can make a lot of money if they, if it's done right. If it's if it's not just like a colossal piece of shit. Because like even the new CGI turtle movie. Yeah. Not I'm not saying like the CGI cartoon like where the turtles themselves were CGI. The current Michael Bay produced ones. Yeah. They're awful, but they make a shit ton of money. Of course, so all they need is the names. Yeah, because if if they can just they, make it appear, they could have a movie that didn't have a single turtle in it and call it Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles and. That'd be four or five goddamn movies yeah. because of the name. Now, Power Rangers isn't as marketable as that, but it is something they could make money off of. So, well, I mean, there's. Uh, it depends on how you define marketable, though. Because every kid out there knows Power Rangers and has seen Power Rangers. I don't think it's as popular as Turtles, though. Tur- Turtles, yeah. is, Turtles is one of the most marketable things of all time because it hits. There are old, there are like fifty-year-old dudes who read the comic books who are into it. Yeah. There are you and me who watched the cartoon as a kid. There are kids now getting sucked into their cartoons now, like so many different ways. It <laughs> Bless can, their souls. Yeah, right. <laughs> there are so many different ways that it can, it can hit. Like Power Rangers is that like the adults that are into it now grew up on it. They they weren't adults when they first got into it. Like there's a lot of people who yeah. were adults when they first got into Turtles. It's but it's still it's very marketable. Now I would give them because I thought Rita would be nearly impossible to cast, but I actually think Elizabeth Banks is a pretty damn good very choice. Very good, very good choice. From I, I don't I don't remember it as well as you do, but I, it mm-hmm. sounds like a great choice. And she's I've never really seen her be bad at anything. She's always been a good, good actress yeah. in pretty much everything. So yeah, I know. It'll definitely be interesting. I think I'm interested to see who they cast Resort on because I think it'll be someone else that's well known because he'll have the least amount of screen time. Um, and whoever voices Goldar. Now, who is that again? Goldar is the big golden flying monkey dude that is a reoccurring villain. He's in every episode. He's like the right-hand person to Rita. Sort of remember this. And... He, uh, they fight him on several occasions alongside the monster of the day. And he got his own Zord in one episode and destroyed theirs. They had to get new powers to take him on. And there is... I think they're coming off of Netflix soon. There's one episode that you need to actually go back and watch. Because Tommy, the Green Ranger, does not have any powers and totally kicks his ass. That's how badass That's Tommy sweet. was. But yeah, dude, uh, I'm interested to see... Because they just have to pay him for voice work, who they'll get to voice Goldar, and who they get for Zordon. Um, if I remember correctly, too, wasn't one of the writers attached to like the second Transformers movie? Oh, God, why you gotta go and tell me that? And we have more giant fucking robots that like merge and stuff. Like I, I don't know. It's gonna... It- <laughs> It depends on how much of that movie was like Michael Bay and Studios. To I, what they, I, I think because wasn't wasn't one of those guys also on the Amazing Spider-Man stuff? A couple of them were, and those were oh, amazing. Although Transformers Two is a specific case because part of it was the writer strike. Yeah, a lot of what made that movie awful was Michael Bay on the fly directing and trying to come up with shit because they had no fucking script because they were without a writing. Team. Right. So yeah, Transformers right. Two. You can't hammer on the writing team as much as you can three because three was not in a writer strike year. They were just awful at writing the fucking movies. So yeah, I can't give those uh, as guys. As far as I'm concerned, they didn't write it. 
I can't give those guys too much shit for two. Who I give all of the shit for two is Michael freaking Bay. Well, yeah, I was gonna say here's the thing. Even if he had a script, he would have fucked it up. That's true. So. Yeah. I, I, out of this Power Rangers film, though, I am curious to see what happens, good or bad, or if it happens. Like, I, I'm mm. just I'm curious about this I, at least. The last thing that I'll say, because we spent this entire podcast so far on the Power Rangers movie more than we have anything else. Um, the last thing, though, is if you look at all the stylized combat stuff and the way we're taking things seriously now, like uh, look at Into the Badlands took stylized combat and made a successful series out of it, a successful season, I'll say at least. Is what I, was saying. I don't think we've heard yet if it's been renewed yet. I think it was. Was it? I'm not sure. I got. I hope it is. I want more of it. But then look at like the comic book movies that are coming out now, or like the Netflix series from Marvel and stuff. How seriously everything's being taken and treated. Um, because before it was just like, oh, it's a comic book movie, so we can do this, this, and this. We don't have to worry about plot developments. We don't have to worry about characters so much. Whatever. In the age where we're taking Daredevil to the nth degree on Netflix, and we have, even though the movie's going to suck, Batman versus Superman, <laughs> right? The, the, how seriously they're taking it. I don't know. I mean, I think Power Rangers might happen. I don't think it'll be good, but I think there's a chance that if they play their cards right, it could be a fucking amazing movie. Yeah, it, we, we just have to find out. I just think I'm it's probably like a out. 5% chance that it's actually going to impress me. I give it a 10% chance to actually happen and then a 5% chance to be good. <laughs> <'Cause>, <laughs> Nothing I mean, but optimism in our podcast today. Because, I mean, sure, that show was shit, but it was like the 90s, and a lot of that stuff was. But that the original series wasn't actually that bad, especially for how bad they got after Lost in Space or Power Rangers in Space, whatever the fuck they called it. Um, Lost Galaxy? Was it, that, was once they got to Lost Galaxy, it got really bad because Power Rangers in Space was supposed to end it. That was the end all. And then it somehow continued. Um, shit like that bothers me anyway, so I was already against it. I was well, you, I was it, fairly it only, grown up enough at that well, point too, only, to be like, what the fuck? They had only existed to sell toys. Yeah. Um, but if you know anything about Power Rangers in Space, you know that was supposed to end the series. That was supposed to cap it. Um, then... We moved into whatever the fuck that was, but that first Power Rangers movie also that came out in theaters, the I guess it was probably the only American-made thing that we did with it. That was actually a pretty good movie, like family uh, movie. Uh, I don't know. All I think back is like, here's the random skydiving scene. Here is the random rollerblading scene. It was like, it was like you know that new Point Break movie? Like, it's more uh, 95 Power Rangers than it is Point Break. Yes, but look at the age it was made in. I know, I'm just saying. So, I don't know. I mean, I thought for creating an original villain, like, he was a pretty Ivan cool Ooze villain. Or, um... For apocalypse, <laughs> yeah, and then the uh, I thought the special effects they did on the Zords back then was mind blowing. I'm sure it looks like shit now. And then the way that we redesigned um, Zed and Rita, dude, Zed, my favorite villain of all time that they've ever had, the inside out dude with the throbbing brain. He looked cool on the series. He was terrifying in the movie. Yeah, I can't fairly evaluate it because it was one of those things that I liked so much as a kid that I will not go back and watch because I like having my. Because there's, there's nothing worse than going back and then having something you loved as a kid and then realizing, like, man, I was a stupid fucking child. Cause Me and Chris started awful. it on Netflix, and we still like it. I, I can't do it. I, I you just got to remember the age it was made in. I, well, well, my brain can't help but <laughs> review something the way I currently see it. So it's like I appreciate that I liked it. But if I went back and, and sought it out again, like I could never see, see it the same way again. I'd become my childhood self again when I enjoy my childhood I'd stuff. I'd become my childhood self again when I can watch something that holds up, like the Batman the Batman the Animated Series, mm-hmm. all of the Nickelodeon Cartoon Network shows of the nineties, like all of those hold up. But Power Rangers in my my mind It's is, funny that you say nineties Nickelodeon in my head immediately goes to Rocco's Modern Life. Shit like that, like you can watch that now, and and there's to me there's there's a difference in Batman the animated series holding up to you as an adult. You can still appreciate it for just like a story. Yeah, Power Rangers, you only like it because you have nostalgia for it. it I think basically what I'm saying is if you took someone who grew up in a cave and had never experienced either one of those, and they're now 35. 
they could totally watch Batman the Animated Series and probably love the shit out of it. I seriously doubt they would like Power Rangers. Did you just quote or invoke a Brendan Fraser movie? Did I? <laughs> Isn't that one that he's like, well, grows up in a nuclear bomb shelter underground or whatever? Oh, yeah, yeah. And then he emerges and he doesn't I forget know what it's world. called, but I know what you're talking about. Yeah. I think you just invoked Brendan Fraser in this conversation. Hey, I like Brendan Fraser. <laughs> Talk shit of the mummy. I like the mummy. I, I, I love the mummy. It's a good fucking movie. We spent way too much fucking time Power Rangers. We, we spent like 15 minutes. We're gonna move Rangers. on and talk to something cool like Legends of Fucking Tomorrow, Ron. Something Fuck worth yes. talking about. Legends of, how? First of all, we should side, do a commentary on that first episode. How fucking badass is Legends of Tomorrow <sighs> in every way? Like especially, especially because right now, Flash. Oh, they are testing my patience with some of their plot lines. Like it's not bad. It's still. It's still way fucking better than a Flash TV show ever should have been. Yes. And it's still very good, but they're testing my patience with some of their plot lines. Legends is just like... Have you seen the most recent episode? No. It seems like they're closing a few of the loops on that. Good. Because what I like so much about Legends, and I haven't seen this week, so I've only seen the first two, which was like, I guess, like the pilot they consider. It was yeah, like I didn't see pilot. tonight's either. So... What I like so much about Legends of Tomorrow, and why it's quickly becoming my favorite of their shows, he's like, it's already fucking better than Arrow. Arrow is already just gone yeah. out, of, out of my brain. But it's all of the cool stuff about Flash and Arrow without the bullshit. Yeah. And I love it for it, because it is just like the Avengers formula. You know who everyone is? They are just, fuck it, go. That yeah. is that whole show. And it's funny, and it's very much like, just on the, like, the review. So far. I mean... It's, it's been fantastic. It's been fantastic, though, and then like hearing what we're about to talk about in today's uh, the news article we're going to discuss, but like it's almost kind of a hard show to fuck up because they have so much they can do. Yeah, and what also helps it is it has a next season. It'll probably bump up to twenty two episodes, but right now it's a shorter runtime, which also helps it. They can condense down and do more. Le- they do less dicking around that Flash and Arrow do, especially Arrow. Yeah. But I just love their their formula for it so far. It has just been amazing. And if they continue even seventy five percent of the quality right now, it'll be I like it better than Flash because yeah. it will never have. Flash is still my favorite, and the writing and everything is good enough that you know, kind of like when it first started, all the bullshit and Arrow first started, you kind of forgave it because everything else was still so good, um, and then that quickly went downhill. And Flash, I can still kind of ignore. I, I do, do. I still like it would like basically the, the way I I talk about f- how I would evaluate Flash like at this moment right now is if we were doing our top five shows again, mm-hmm. it would be it would drop down like a peg. Like it'd still uh-huh. be like four or five. It'd still be like top five favorite show. I still right. love that show, but they're like it's dropping down a peg with some of the stuff they're doing. But I, I I it looked like they were starting to close some of their painfully. Uh, ongoing storylines that should have been ended a while back. So yeah, it'll get better. In, in fact, um, this most recent episode is what led to my theory that you don't want to hear. Yeah, because I don't seek out those shit. Because if it's right, it like your smart Star Wars thing. You had a <laughs> speculation that spoiled something for you. But okay, well, let's get to the the news article for Legends. Uh, they have started teasing some of their side characters for upcoming episodes, and they are mining some of the really really cool like D list. DC characters and they're they're D they're in their D list not because they're bad characters but because they're characters you can't develop into like its own thing yeah. but they're very very cool for like one or two two off episodes. The list so far they've teased have been Red Tornado, which recently was in Supergirl if you remember that. Yes, he's uh I think he's he, the Vision, right? Basically, yeah. <laughs> well, their version was, but. The I'm sure the Legends one will probably be a little bit closer to the comic. He's he's, right. he's more of like an android than he, he's he's more of like a robot than an android really. Yeah, he's very very cool. Uh, you need to get around to watching Young Justice. He's one of the um, the Justice League members who is mentoring the Teen Titans in it. Uh huh. He's he's cool in that show too. I think he was also in Justice League Unlimited because they they ended up using like freaking everyone in Justice League Unlimited. Did they? Uh, That's the, the one I remember the least. Uh, they are also doing the original, probably the original Sandman. Now, now this is not 
like you earlier, your brain immediately goes to Spider-Man Sandman. Yes. This is a character that even predates that Sandman. This was like talking like 40s, 50s DC, like old school. Wow. Like, probably hasn't even had a series in decades, but a cool character. Uh, Sergeant Rock, which is, uh, he's a character I believe my dad is could tell you a lot more about than I can, because I haven't, uh, he, he's one of those kind of like... Um, you know how Jonah Hex in DC is a Western yeah. one-off? Sergeant Rock is kind of like a military one-off for DC. Okay. And then the really cool one that I'm excited for that I saved for last to talk about is Our Man. Now, have you ever heard of Our Man ever? Not at all. Our Man has one of the cooler little perks in how his powers are set up. Uh-huh. Okay, he has this chemical formula that grants him kind of like Captain America's type powers, but his body can only handle it one hour of the day. So okay. he can only be a superhuman hu- for one hour of the day. Huh. So it's it creates a cool little thing that you could work into TV, too, in that, like, if you're a superhero and your hour runs out, what the fuck do you do? Right. Like, they can do a lot of interesting stuff. And, like, especially these dudes, and they just took that fucking dude in the Flash, the turtle guy, and made yeah. him into, like, a menacing villain, like... These characters, they are going to knock, and Jonah Hex too that we talked yeah. about last week. They are going to knock all of these out of the park. It's going to be amazing, dude. I'm really hoping that they knock Jonah Hex out of the park because I think that that is something else CW could spin off into its own thing. I'm still hoping one day we'll get somehow some more Constantine and Legends because it's so easy to do. Like, yeah, like they really should. Find a way to bring him back. They've too. already opened that door with the Arrow crossover with him, and then now yeah. they're crossing over Supergirl, right? Well, they're across yeah, the yeah. Flash. That actually is a good segue to our next news article, and that is that Greg Berlanti announced this week, the last couple of days actually, that uh, on Supergirl, March 28th, uh, Grant Gustin will be appearing as the Flash. Now you see, it makes a lot of sense because CBS and the CW stuff, they're the same parent company, right? Yeah. So, it's why lot, not? It's a lot easier for them than it was for CW to get Constantine, because yeah. NBC was... it was. Uh, I think NBC is actually owned by uh, Warner Brothers, if I'm not mistaken. It could be mm-hmm. Paramount. It's one of the big movie companies, though, I believe. Right. So, yeah, they had more hoops to jump through than... Especially considering it's Greg Berlanti, and he is the overseer of all of their shit. Right. All of the current... Including tele- Supergirl. He's basically like the way Jeff Johns is for the comic division. Yeah. He's like the TV... like overseer so he can i mean uh they'll probably eventually now do arrow uh so i was gonna say yeah because you basically have a defenders with the cw stuff cw and cbs i kind of wish they 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 would have been able to i I mean i hear supergirl has gotten a lot better yeah but if they had started that solely over on cw i don't think it ever would have started out and had to get better i think it would have started off a lot better yeah because i mean shit dude like how many, how many episodes of Flash did we watch before we even got to a mediocre one? Like 15? Like yeah, something it, like Every that. episode of that and was even good. the mediocre one is still good. Yeah. You know? So, I, I mean... Uh, a lot of, Arrow is just mediocre at best now. So, so I think we beat the shit out of Arrow more than anything on this podcast. Well, dude, season one? Eh, that's cool. Season two was fucking fantastic, and then it just went down the drain. But the sad thing is, Arrow himself is still amazing, but the rest of the show is shit. I'm just, I, I still get angry for the Diggle actor in that goddamn helmet. Every time I see him in that helmet, I'm like, dude, At on le- Legends, <laughs> Hawkman and Hawk Girl look badass. And At least so they depressing. announced he's getting a new one from Cisco. Did they? They did. Oh, thank God. In I didn't the, hear that. In the next crossover, Cisco's going to have a helmet thank, for him. I think God, so, like... Whoever designed that helmet should be fired. Like, it's I, that I painful took that, to look at. I took that as we're not the only ones that have been making fun of and bitching about the helmet. Which, I, if he he has a right to bitch about that fucking helmet if it's the actor. Because, like, good lord, he looks ridiculous. The, the actor... Remember I told you there's an interview where he dropped... Um, uh, the the uh, spoilers for Arrow. He dropped the Waller death mm-hmm. that you saw. He also in that same interview dropped the helmets. They asked him about the helmet, and he said that he's going to get one from Cisco. How about if, usually their stuff that they say is from Cisco looks fucking like their whole Bat Cave look, which looks pretty yeah. cool. Is from Does he Cisco. have a name yet? Um, because Cisco will probably name him. They they've been calling him Spartan. Spartan. Like, in the last er, episode or two. Okay. <laughs> so, maybe they'll have Cisco also give him a cooler new name. 
in addition to his new Spartan. Three hundred and one something. something. Oh. <laughs> uh, let's let's say we have one more DC related thing to get to in the I TV section. I am somewhat excited for this one. So, Justice League action, uh, which we talked about before a while back, because they had that tweet come out with the image of like the teaser poster yeah it, it had like the silhouettes of all the characters and shit yeah. of, of this new upcoming JLA cartoon which would be Justice League related yeah, the, the picture if I remember correctly was the posters of their upcoming lineup and the one at the very end was, just said JLA and it had all the silhouettes like you mentioned all over and everyone yeah. was like what? so uh, they just announced the last couple of days their full cast and it's fucking great because they pulled out all the stops for it. Kevin Conroy is your Batman. Mark Hamill is your Joker. Who's which, supposed to be retired. Which I never thought those two would get back together for yeah. anything but one of either the games or yeah. the movies that especially Killing Joke that they're still trying to I think I think they're probably recording but they've kept it under wraps that they've officially been included in it. Right. But um, Justice League action uh, also one cool one was uh, Deidre Bader was cast as Booster Gold. Uh huh. Which, it, uh, I wasn't crazy about it, but I always liked, uh, have you ever heard, uh, Brave and the Bold Batman, that's Dietrich Bader playing him, he had kind of like an Adam West-ish, mm, kind no. of, like, like he was kind of playing Adam West, and then it was like half Adam West, half Kevin Conroy, actually yeah. he did a really good job on that show, because you know it was set up to be like 50s Batman, kind of. Right. I always thought he was good on that, so he's gonna be playing Booster Gold, which if you don't, if you don't know Dietrich Bader, he is... Office space. His his room. Uh, his roommate next door. Oh, is Deidre Bader. Yeah. Okay, from the Drew Carey show. From Drew Carey show. Yeah. Yeah, I know exactly who he is. Then. Uh, yeah, he's a very very prolific voice actor. Yeah. I don't tell no one either. Who the fuck was that? Two jigs at the same time, man. <laughs> um, Watch out for oh, a cornhole, uh, bud. What's what's his uh, James Woods will be Lex Luthor, which I was an yeah. interesting new addition. He, Clancy Brown will always be my favorite, just because of how many times he's been the, the animated right. Lex Luthor. But that's a good replacement. Yeah, I was gonna say that. James Woods would be great. Uh, that'd be really really good. And the the two other, yeah. but I will always hear Lex Luthor going, "Ooh, piece of candy." Right. <laughs> now, that, and the other two things that made me probably the most excited, other than uh, Hamill and Conroy, is that Alan Burnett and uh, Butch Lucas were both producers and executive producers slash creators on Batman Beyond and Batman the Animated Series are involved in this as producers. And wasn't Bruce Tim involved? I don't know if Tim is involved in this one. I haven't seen his name attached to it yet. I but it Alan, was. Alan Burnett is the, uh, the, the biggest of the old school EPs that they brought into it. And probably my favorite thing related to it... Uh, Paul Dini will be writing episodes, which if you have Paul Dini involved writing it, it will be good, period. Paul Dini just doesn't make bad um, written episodes or games of any kind. It's fucking Paul Dini, dude. Yeah, I know. I was... He, he might see. be loosely attached as a producer because he's he's usually attached to like fucking everything when it comes to DC animated stuff. But uh, from the articles I read, I never saw his name. I thought the one on Nerdist had his name along with Paul Dini's. Let's see. The ones I remember were Butch Lucas and Alan Burnett, but I could be wrong. Let's, Let's see. see. I'm helping you look, too. Dude, this is thrilling radio yeah. as we're both picking up our phones. Need some, uh... Hmm. Let's on, see. Do, 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 do. Okay, I think I found it here. Yeah, this is the article. Did you find the Nerdist one? Yeah. Uh, here's the teaser poster. Okay, Conroy Hamill, James Woods, Diedrich Bader. Uh, da, 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 da. I could have swore I'm not seeing it in here. I could have swore I saw Bruce Timm's name somewhere. I'm sure in some way he's at least a producer because nothing animated for DC usually gets by without being Bruce Timm. Um, Associated in some way. <laughs> well, now I'm just embarrassed. All right, dude, he, he <laughs> might be. I, I'm sure he's involved in some way. But the only negative about this is I'm not crazy about the art style. But everything yeah. else going for it could make up for it. Because like, um, what was it? Beware the Batman was their their 3D CGI one. Yeah. Like, like I loved it. Kevin Smith loved it. Like the animation, I hated. But right. everything else about it was so good, I didn't care. 
because that that was even like the one time they even did um, in the cartoon like he he was like a full blown detective like they had a scene where he was like Robert Downey Sherlock Holmes like analyzing a diner telling really? where everyone had been like that had never been done in a Batman cartoon I love that hmm. so like this this just like action like it looks kind of like they're um, it looks like they're like Justice League kids you know it's like it's got that um, Teen Titans Go aesthetic a little bit yeah not quite that bad but 50 50 from what you'd like and then that but shit dude if they got Deanie and Burnett and Hamill and Conroy and all those guys involved yeah. like it's it's got to be at least it's got to be at least good enough to where you're not going to care about the animation I, yeah yeah I'm, and I'm usually more of a story junkie when it comes to that type of stuff than animation anyway mm-hmm. um, although I did love Love the Young Justice animation. It has I think a- part of the reason why I'm disappointed, though, is that poster with the silhouettes. It looked a lot like the old style animation and the silhouettes. That's that's true. So I think that's one reason why it could have even like, been a oh. last second change. Like that's, that's true. Yeah, I mean, who knows? But I'm I'm still looking forward to checking this out at least. Uh, we've got a couple of gaming news articles to run through, and then we are out of here for the day. The first one up, continuing the DC theme. Is did you even know this was a thing, Ron? Apparently, Dark Knight had a game adaptation in the works. Did not know. I was always kind of surprised it didn't because every movie gets one. But and what, what was crazy about this is I actually watched on Nerdist part of the footage related to this, where they had like some of the old developers and stuff talking about it. Yeah, and they had footage of them were doing audio. Uh, they, they were doing ADR and stuff with the cast. Yeah, it was so early on in development. Katie Holmes was a part. Really? Of the ADR, like, and she was she was kicked out of the Dark Knight casting very very quickly, so they were even starting that before they started filming the movie, which is crazy. Yeah, that's insane. So it ended up, um, I I, uh, I didn't end up getting to watch the full video related to this project, but I think it eventually got canceled because their game engines ended up, they didn't have enough time to actually perfect their game engines right. to make it fully functional because they were actually being pretty ambitious with it. Like, they wanted to make Arkham Asylum before there was an Arkham Asylum. They wanted kind of like a quasi-open-world Batman game where you can yeah. move around and it wasn't so streamlined like they used to be. Now, was it going to be on the style of like the Spider-Man games where they're kind of their own unique thing and they bring in other characters that weren't in the movie. I think that's probably a good comparison. Like It was kind of like the Spider-Man games approach. Mm-hmm. But what the, the main reason I wanted to include this in the podcast was I don't care if it's one line, but I would kill to listen to all of the Heath Ledger Joker ADR. Yes. Like just one line. I would pay them $20 just to hear a few lines of extra Joker dialogue. Cause that, how cool would that be to... It came out in 2008, I think. You know, eight years after the fact, get a little bit more Joker because of this game that never happened. Right. I, would, I would love to hear that. Like, That'd I, be really I cool. Hope, I hope they find a way to release all of their, their recorded dialogue they had for the characters. Because when you think about it, too... What's interesting about the Joker specifically is Heath Ledger and Christopher Nolan and Jonathan Nolan were creating that character, probably Goyer a little bit too, I don't know how involved in the filmmaking he was, they were creating that character on the fly all the time too. Like when, he, when he locked himself famously in the hotel room with Killing Joke and his diaries and stuff like that and in his mind created the Joker character, it still was organically being changed as the movie went on right so that would be if that was early on enough to have katie holmes involved like that would be very very early joker stuff and i, I think it'd be very fascinating to see him kind of like going through the motions of creating that character so i hope that finds a way to hit the internet at some point because that would be amazing yes it would speaking of amazing holy <laughs> shit if you have not seen the lego star wars force awakens trailer stop our mediocre podcast and go watch this amazing trailer <laughs> I think you probably watched it more times than I have, so why don't you give them a rundown? Basically, it's that first uh, that first trailer that ever came out in Legos. So uh, they even got the like the perfect camera angles again, and they did everything in true like Lego fashion. Where um, right after the the very first line, when he says there's been an awakening, and then it shows Finn pop up in the dunes, you hear an alarm clock right after he says it. And, and I love where BB-8 is rolling, and he's like in front of a beach, and he ends up like running into a sandcastle, yeah, shit like that. Yeah, yeah. Um, the lightsaber, the the lightsaber claymore. Uh, the first time he turns it on, the main beam doesn't start; just the two side ones does, and he shakes it, and then it's they cl- go it out. It clacks like a flashlight. Yeah, yeah, and then the two go out, and the the main beam comes on, and then he has to like hit it, and then it finally starts up. And I don't it's know. So it's oh, and then like you're talking like 
they, the cinematography on the Falcon going upside down was like just perfect yeah. for the movie. It was so And cool. then it zooms out and it was a Lego figure's head that they were so riding good. in yeah. the sky. It was just excellent. I, I am not... I, I like the Lego games for what they are, but I am not a big puzzle game player, so I don't usually play them that See, much. See, and that's what makes me sad because they started out kind of... Like one of the old school Zeldas, not to that extreme, but how it was kind of a mix of action and puzzle. Now it's just more puzzle. Than I, I love their like. I would love to watch like uh, all of the Lego games on like a Let's Play. Yeah, I, I like them a lot. I just don't personally like playing that type of game. Yeah, but their comedy is golden. Like even just that trailer alone the, is uh, amazing. The, old, the older Lego games are amazing to play. Uh, and this this is I think this one's continuing the recent trend of them having a lot of the the full dialogue just mapped over, yeah. but in the background they have they add comedic effects to it. Yeah. So yeah, I think I think it's be really really cool. And then, dude, how much fucking money is Lego Force Awakens gonna make? Oh my god! All of the money at and, the at the end of the trailer, they did the BB-8 thumbs yes, up thing yes. with the torch, which that was my first impression. It was just like. Where do I find Lego BB-8, and where can I buy Lego BB-8? Because that needs to be on my shelf. So, yeah, will you be will you be buying this? You think? You because you, cause you well, uh, how you're really into the Lego games. How much of them do you typically buy? For a while, we bought every one. Chris is still into them. I'm not into them as much as I used to be. I'm kind of over them, just because I don't like puzzle games, and they became all puzzle games. Yeah. Uh, you know they steered away from like the first one I think they ever did was Lego Star Wars, and it was amazing. The prequels, right? Was it the prequels they did, or did they do original Lego Star Wars? Or like OG? they did, they did both, but I think they started with prequels. Okay. And My brother, who was not a big gamer at all, was obsessed with those Lego games. Yeah, they were just amazing, amazing games, and. I don't know what happened. They just started making them into puzzle games. It kind of... uh, We got 100% completion on every game up to Lego Pirates of the Caribbean. And after that, it just was too frustrating. and wasn't even worth it. Lego Marvel, which I haven't played Lego Avengers, which just came out. But Lego Marvel was just so fucking buggy. It was almost impossible to play. How was Dimensions? Have you been liking Dimensions? Because you guys bought that one, right? It frustrates me. I bought it for Chris for Christmas because she wanted it so bad, but it frustrates me. Is she liking no it? End. She loves it. Yeah, I like a lot of people who aren't even big in the Lego games had dimensions on their top ten list last year. Like it, it hit a lot don't, of people. Just watch the let's plays. Don't play it. It's not oh worth yeah, it. well they're they're just, I'm sim- I'm similar to you. I just don't enjoy it. But the the. The frustration involved in puzzle games, to me, usually outweighs the fun I'm having while playing them. Lego Indiana Jones and Lego Indiana Jones 2 are probably my favorites, but just because it was... Uh, dude, even the uh, the achievements were like the lines from the movie and stuff. It was really? amazing, yeah. Um, but Lego Dimensions has the this game board, and you know, you can buy the figures and stuff, and you put the figures on the game board, it brings them into the game. Yeah. That game board just annoys the fuck out of me. I can see that, too, because you were explaining to me a little bit about how you have to have them in a certain position to be able to activate them and shit. Yes, and to do certain things on screen, you have to move them around on the board and That's stuff. That's an unnecessary pain in the balls, in my yeah. opinion. Yeah, fuck that. Little kids would, would eat it up, because they want to get their hands in the Legos as much as they Even want Even as a the kid, game. I didn't enjoy moving. So, <laughs> <laughs> I was just like, no, I'd just be like, nope, yeah. not doing that. Well, if uh, I think this is going to be three episodes in a row, Ron. We were sub-45 minutes. Look at that shit. Let's do a little high five. Yeah, that's impressive. Especially yeah, thank, for us. Thank you, News, for not having shit It'd to talk about. It would have been 30 if it weren't for Power Rangers. Fucking Power Rangers. Like, dude, you just fucking Elizabeth Banks, man. She's just fucking taking her career, man. Like, it's fucking crazy. It's fucking travesty, bro. Fucking travesty. Well, if you enjoyed our podcast for whatever reason, we appreciate your loyalty for sitting through 43 minutes of us talking about Power Rangers. Uh, make sure and like and subscribe to the YouTube channel because you will get all of our content. We just recently wrapped up our full sequential of Dark Souls. You can watch all of Dark Souls in its glory played like just total shit by me and Ron which makes it even better <laughs> coming soon anyway part 23 is going to be releasing soon yeah. so 27 yeah. I think was the final count so yeah we have those on the agenda and will be released anytime now so keep keep uh, keep an eye out for those check out our social medias we are on Twitter at TWBE Podcast or Facebook.com forward slash TWBE Podcast and is there anything else you would like to add Ron 
Nope. Don't think so. I think that's it. Thanks, guys, and we will catch you next time.